What we're all doing right now, believe it or not, is we're actually making the case for why you should, if you do have a workout partner, you should pick the perfect workout partner. Because everything we listed, could, really what we're pointing to is the fact that we've worked out with workout partners that didn't, that weren't perfect for us. Like you just said, I don't want to talk about drama. I'm not there to talk to somebody. Well, imagine if you had a workout partner that understood that. They showed up, fist bump, headphones on, we do our thing. Like picking the perfect workout partner is to me, like it goes like this. This is going to sound funny, but it's like you you pick your spouse. <laughs> That's very important. Your business partner, workout partner. Like it's, <laughs> it's up there, like of how important it is that you pick the right person because it could make or break your workout. It could cause injury or help you prevent injury. It could get you better results or worse results. What's up, everybody? Here's the giveaway for today's episode, MAPS Anabolic. This is the MAPS program that started it all. Still the most popular MAPS workout program. You can get it for free, but you got to do the following. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. Do all those things. And if we pick your comment, we'll notify you and you get free access to MAPS Anabolic. Also, we're running a sale right now on a workout program bundle and on a workout program. Okay, they're all 50% off. So here's what they are. The program bundle is the starter bundle. It includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Prime, and the Intuitive Nutrition Guide. That whole thing, 50% off its retail price. The program that's on sale is MAPS Split. This is a bodybuilder-style, high-volume body part split routine. Again, that's also 50% off. So if you're interested, go to mapsfitnessproducts.com, click on one of those two things, or both, you can get them both, and use the code MAYSPECIAL for the 50% off discount. All right, here comes the show. Let's talk about uh, whether or not you should have a workout I, workout partner. I well, let's start with you because you <laughs> have said me. on the show <laughs> that I do. I, that you hate training partners. You I never do. like to work out with training partners. Do. Like, do. Why do you hate them so much? Uh, <laughs> okay, well, there's first of all, let me be let me be clear and honest. Um, the first probably five to eight years, I would say eight years tops. I had a workout partner and did all kinds of different workout partners, but I was also at a very different phase in my, my, my training career and also my level of knowledge and understanding how to train and how to program was minimal still, even at year five, I would say, um, once that came full circle and I realized like, oh, what do I, what, what does my body need and mm -hmm. what should I be doing? Um, I started to realize quickly like, oh, the advantages of, of having a workout partner uh, actually feed into what I shouldn't be doing more than they feed into the things I should be doing. Let me guess. You're talking mm. about, because I used to think the same thing, like, well, I need a training partner. So how am I going to do force reps? Yeah. yeah. I'm going to push myself. Yeah. 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 And, and I need it for safety because I need a spotter there. I mean, I'm doing so much weight. It was, it was centered around pushing yourself, spotting and motivation. The three things I probably talked the most shit about now. Yeah. I yeah. So when you hear me say that, because I know I always get people that like, because there's, I know there's people. Because there's lots of people that get great. Have there's great lots of people that have, yeah, that have incredible workouts with their partner, and they've got, they've created a, a consistency around it. And that 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 statement is not for you. And if it, that's whatever, it's it's my own experience, um, and what where I've come full circle in my training regimen. And I at one point was very attached to having workout partners and would say the same things like, oh, I'm so consistent because I know someone else has got to be there, and I'm the type of person where if we say we're going to meet at six. I'm going to, I'm not the type of guy who just, I'm not flaky. Like, and even right. if I don't want to go because I know I'm committed to seeing him, I'm going to go. Right? right. So, so I, I could make the case why it was so great early on, but later on, I, I realized that these forced reps and training to failure and this intense training or following just what the other guy was doing were all the wrong things for, for me. Yeah, I've, I've had training partners. I'd say 90% of my workout career is on my own. 10% I've had workout partners. And I've had good and bad experiences. Some of the the worst I can think of, um, there was one guy I worked, I won't say his name, but there was one guy I worked out with where it was a constant ego fest. And, and really what it was, was I was way more advanced and I was way more, I was way stronger than he was. So I had to watch this guy constantly add weight to his bar, shorten his reps, do crappy form because he wanted so bad to lift the weight that I would lift. And then being a trainer, it was like, it just ruined my workout. Yeah, nails I, on a chalkboard for you. So man. I'm like, come on, dude. And I would say to him, like, you should probably go lighter. No, I could do it. No. And I'm watching him do just sh shitty form. And then we're in a gym and people are watching and I'm like, dude, 
I'm like, try, I want to wear a shirt that says I'm not working out with this guy. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I don't know him. So he was terrible. And then I've had great workout partners. And you know what's funny? That the few workout partners that I've had that were good were all women. Mm. And it's, oh, interesting. And it's because... It's about your strength level? <laughs> yeah. Hey, dude. I tell you. No, really, what, <laughs> stupid. What it was was uh, that they that there was no ego involved because it was understood that the weights were going to be much different. I'm not trying to lift as much as them and vice versa. And it kept me like smooth with my workout uh, mm -hmm. versus when I work out with a guy. Now I just told you about the worst one, but let's say I work out with one of you guys and you guys are smart. You know what you're doing. Inevitably, if I worked out with you guys in week in week out, I'm probably going to push myself harder than I should more often than not, because oh. we're closer in strength and we're more likely to, Subconsciously, to the competitiveness is still there. Yeah, I mean, you so, can't really like yes. deny it. You don't. So. It's, that's the part about it. It's so it's so subconscious that you don't. Uh, I I don't even feel like I realize until after the workout, and I yeah. go like, I was not playing. Man, I beat that. myself up. Good. Yeah, like yeah. your like your friends, like you. You know, if I worked out with Justin and we're doing a thing, and we're both smart, we know what we're doing. And I'm like, yeah, I think I'm done. And Justin's like, oh, I'm going to do three more sets. <laughs> There's Something like, inside oh, of me. Do more. <laughs> yeah, something inside of me is gonna be like, oh well, you know, I'll I'll do some too or whatever. Or he adds a plate to the bar, you know. I'm gonna be like, well, all right, I'll try a couple reps with you know with that. Yeah, that ends up happening. But when I worked out with women, uh, first off, women are less likely to do the ego lifting. That's just a fact. Okay, it's just my experience. Yeah. Um, and second, the strength differential was so big that they weren't trying to catch up to me because it was it was futile, and I wasn't trying to catch up with them. So we would do appropriate weight and it was just a much better, uh, more effective workout. So, yeah, I've had a few workout partners in my day, but it really never aligned. It just, it would last for maybe like a month and it was the inconsistency factor or it was the just discrepancies between the, the amount of weight we're lifting and it just, and, the, and then the whole time I just felt like I was leading, directing the entire workouts every single time. And it just got exhausting. It's like, like you're I can do this to myself. Like, yeah. why am I, yeah, exactly. Why am I just training? And again, a lot of times I'd want to kind of pull my friends in because it, I felt like, you know, this is also a way that I can help kind of get them in shape while I'm working on myself. Uh, but you just get burned out and uh, it totally kind of changes the dynamic of what a workout means to me. Well, you just said something too that reminds me of uh, like the transition I made uh, later on in my lifting career of my training, training being this like beating myself up versus something almost more meditative. Mm. So as I got later in my career, it, it became like my sanctuary, like for to go and work out. And so having a, a partner that I had to talk to or plan the workout for, like it would disrupt that. So, and I know you talk a lot about that now, like that's you of all of us, uh, you know, swear by, I have to have my hour because yep. it is your place to center yourself. It's your no distractions. Therapy. Yeah. And I can totally relate to that because later on in my lifting career, that's what my workouts tend to be. Now they're more therapeutic, I would say than they are chasing goals or PRs. Mm -hmm. And so I don't want, and I don't want somebody in my, like, I definitely don't want a friend who's telling me about the drama with his girlfriend or the bullshit he's dealing with at work. When I'm like trying to be in this, like, you know, meditative state where I'm like working inward on myself or I'm just being relaxed or I'm just thinking about the weight being present. Yeah. Like, so what we're all doing right now, believe it or not, is we're actually making the case for why you should, if you do have a workout partner, you should pick the perfect workout partner because everything we listed could, really what we're pointing to is the fact that we've worked out with workout partners that didn't, that weren't perfect for us. Like you just said, I don't want to talk about drama. I'm not there to talk to somebody. Well, imagine if you had a workout partner that understood that they showed up, fist bump, headphones on, we do our thing. Like picking the perfect workout partner is to me, like it goes like this. This is going to sound funny, but it's like you you pick your spouse. <laughs> That's very important. Your business partner, workout partner. Like it's, <laughs> It's up there, like of how important it is that you pick the right person because it could make or break your workout. It could cause injury or help you prevent injury. It could get you better results or worse results. I'll tell you one that almost never works. Now, in my for me, this worked out well because uh, I did work out for a while with my wife and, and we were great workout partners. It was a good time. But usually, usually as a trainer and a gym manager, whenever I'd see couples work out together or a, a, a husband and a a wife or boyfriend or girlfriend, they're like, yeah, we're going to work out together. I remember I would always think, 
oh boy, this is not going to work out. And it almost fail. never did. It never did for me. It, it almost Katrina never did. Was a fir- Katrina was the first ever. So for 30 years of my life, no girlfriend training at all. Never worked out. Because it, for me, it was, uh, and this is my experience, right? So um, I take training very seriously and you know everything down to the mechanics, to the flow of the workout, to the rest periods, to things like that. And that's like, I, I've learned to internalize that. I don't, I don't have to verbalize it when I'm working out myself, but when I have another person who, and with a partner, a girlfriend uh, or spouse that tends to get disrupted a lot. And then when I would try and like get us on p- track, like they would giggle or think it's funny that I would be so serious about it. And then it would just be, it would, it would never <laughs> ended well, yeah. dude. So early on, I figured that out. Yeah. I was like, no, I won't do that. Well, I've seen just managing gyms. I've signed up couples before and they're like, yeah, we're going to work out together. And I, you know, I'd sign them up of course. And that, but I think in the back of my head, like, all right, we'll see how this works out. Yeah. And I've seen them, you know, like arguments on the workout floor or whatever happened the day before carries over into the workout or one of them's more serious. The other person takes it personal. It always starts with like the push up claps together. Stupid. The the crunching kisses (laughs) and then the fight, you know, it just doesn't last. Yeah, it just usually doesn't work. But if it does, it works out uh, great. So I think what we should do is talk about how to pick the perfect workout partner because we're really making the case that picking the wrong person uh, can can really ruin uh, your fitness and your workout. Just like picking the wrong spouse can <laughs> ruin your life, you you want to pick a good uh, workout partner. So one thing to consider is this, and you have to, by the way, all the things that we're going to go through here, you have to be very honest with yourself because I'm about to say something, and I know most people are going to think one thing, but the truth is half are in one place and half are the other place. So you need to ask yourself honestly, do should I work out with someone that's going to push me or should I work out with someone that's going to pull me back a little bit? Now, I, being honest with myself, the last workout partner I would I should work out with would be someone who pushes me. Somebody who pushes me, who I already have a tendency to push myself too hard, is going to result in overtraining, injury, lifting too much weight. I do not want to work out with a hype, you know, motivation extreme person. For me, as awesome as that may sound, sometimes... It's not going to work out very well. And I know most people watching this are thinking, yeah, I need someone to push me. Be honest with yourself because a lot of people actually need someone to pull them back. That's why I found working yeah, out. Yeah, the client that I think needs the push or the client that like has a hard time even finishing a 30-minute workout because they want to just stop. They're like, oh, sure. I'm yeah. bored or I'm over it or I don't like this. Like that person may be. But they if don't you're, have the mental discipline yet. Yeah, so if you're already somebody. like a, a pretty consistent, hardcore training person, like thinking that you need it. I mean, now you're falling in the trap that I fell in when I was in my 20s. Yes. Like, I love to train. I was already training seven days a week. And exactly. then I wanted a workout partner who was going to push me harder in my workout, like, which is not what that person needs. I probably needed someone to pull me back. Right. So pull back would be someone who's like, hey, you know, um, you're, that's you're going too heavy or let's let's slow down a little bit or let's take a longer rest or hey let's try this exercise and try, instead of that pushed is like i think you could do more one more rep yeah. or you know last time you did 10 you know let's try 11 you should max or, out today bro yeah maybe not that <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you got to be honest with yourself because they're going to compliment you or they're going to they're going to uh, be a detriment to you yeah. and i identified it and by this took me a long time to figure out that i need someone that's going to pull me back more. Someone's going to keep me, my ego more in check versus push me. Cause when I work out with the push me type workout partner, it would just, it would just not end up. Yeah. Well I totally me. agree. I'm in the same position where I'd rather have somebody kind of slow me down and, and, you know, really focus on the the technical aspects of everything. And I did have a, a friend of mine who was a trainer who was really good at that and who had also had a completely different skill set. And so his focus was, you know, he had a lot of martial arts experience and he had a lot of like interesting, unconventional type lifts he knew. And so every now and then he would teach me things, which I thought was very helpful uh, for me to incorporate in the workouts. Yes. Here's another one you should ask yourself. Like, do you like to lead the workout or do you want to follow? Um, Some people, they want to work out with a workout partner and they want to be like, Hey, I want to follow your workout. Like I'll follow your workout. I'll do whatever you say, whatever you do. This is what I enjoy. I don't have to think about it. I feel like that works in the relationship when you've got the friend who's the experienced trainer and you're the, you know, software engineer. Well, that's true. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? It's like, I got, I got my buddy who's like, this is his wheelhouse. So I'm going to let it, I'm going to let him rock. That's totally true. And it could work, right? Because if you're both trying to lead, it's not going to, this is why we don't work out together. You know, Justin, Adam, and myself, we've now had mind pump for seven years. (laughs) 
we've worked out, like when I mean worked out together, because we've worked out together, but not together. Like we're all in different parts of the gym. But we've all actually worked out together together, I think two times, if I'm not mistaken. Less than five for sure. Yeah, probably. definitely less than five for that reason right there, because all of us like to lead. I don't want to work out with someone uh, who's going to lead the workout. I want to do my workout. If you want to follow me, cool. If not, then go do your own thing. Um, but someone may be the opposite. Someone may be like, hey, I want to show up and, and do someone else's workout. And that's totally fine. And you also want to ask yourself, like, do I want to follow because I need more of this particular thing in my workouts? Like yep. uh, mm -hmm. mobility, for example, or flexibility or, or you know, powerlifting. Maybe those are things that you you know you should incorporate and you work out with someone that's good at those things. So you're just like, I'm just going to follow your workout. Yeah. Have you guys, uh, can you think of times where you act, because I obviously you guys naturally want to lead the workout. Mm -hmm. So how often have you found yourself wanting to follow someone's workout? I've, I've worked with mm. people who helped me with flexibility, but it was a flexibility workout. So it wasn't strength training. So we'd show up and then I'd let them lead me through yoga or flexibility. And it worked out really well for me because I'm not going to lead that and I'm probably not going to do it. Right? Yeah. I when know. I was first learning kettlebells, um, I worked with, uh, you know, some, some of my friends who were very proficient in them. And so I would let them sort of take me through uh, what a workout would consist of if I just used that one tool and, you know, really worked on the technique of everything. But honestly, like once I got like one session, I was like, okay, I'm going to go <laughs> work on all this myself. Yeah. And it's just, that's just how I am. But um, I definitely appreciate when somebody has a really good skill set that I could learn something from, I look at that as like an opportunity. Uh, but in terms of like having to have somebody kind of lead me and guide me through the whole process of getting better at it, no thanks. Yeah, no, those those are the only times I can think about where I didn't want to lead my lead the workout, or it's just purely I actually am curious and I want to learn from this person. Yes, right. Yeah. So I, I mean, I've had the opportunity to work out with. Ben Pokolsky, Paul Check, like we've had some people like that that I've had the opportunity to lift with. And when I'm with someone like that, who I have a lot of respect for their knowledge, their experience, that's Same. about the only time where I'll be like, oh, you know what? I'll take a backseat on what I think I want to do today. Let's just see where he takes me and see what he's into because you know, I might pick something up that I like. And, yeah. so, and every time I've done that with someone like that, I feel like I get something. Yeah, yeah. No, like Mike Salemi. Like I did a few like unconventional <laughs> stuff with him with Bulgarian bags or with kettlebells. And it was it was enlightening, you know, to see like at that high level of technique uh, what you could, you know, incorporate in the workout. Yeah, when I was younger, I had a few not workout partners, but workouts with people that I that I follow. There was a the, the story I've told about the power lifters. That was great. I was a young kid, had no idea what the hell I was doing. And I was just so happy that these guys were allowing me to follow their workout. I worked out with a bodybuilder one time, again, as a kid, I think I was 18 or 19. And that was super awesome because I just followed his work. It was way inappropriate for me. It was way too much volume, but I learned things. I learned some stuff. I learned through certain exercises. I learned how to connect to certain muscles and squeeze. And so that was really fun. So I can see the value in it. It's just that this is my profession. Same thing with you guys. So we're prop we're definitely biased towards the lead side yeah. than we would be towards the follow. Well, side. I also think this matters where you're at in your journey too. And like mm -hmm. the next point that you you bring up is talking about um the connection, right? In in the workout or the potential workout partner. Like there there could be a time in my life, and there's definitely been this where um I'm working out, like not we just came out of this not that long ago where I was working out quite a bit with Katrina. And it was really more about the experience with her and my son and lifting. Like mm -hmm. I really, I actually had no routine at all. It was like, you know, whatever she was doing, I would, I would, I would move the bar, whatever. Like if it was a it's weight movement. Really. Yeah. 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 If, if she was squatting, maybe I could overhead press that weight. And so I would be overhead pressing and then she'd get the suspension trainer. Oh, okay. Now I'm doing suspension trainer stuff and, and then br taking breaks, playing with Max at his table and his Play-Doh yep. and like. So, you know, there's there I think it's important that I know that I I rail on the oh, I don't want a workout partner. Um yeah, when I'm on my specific kick and I'm trying to hit goals and I'm so but then there's times when uh the connection, when uh, or a bond with a friend where I just Good it's point. more about that communication and meeting with someone do choosing to do something healthy and growth minded and good for us for an hour and a half with a friend who gives a shit what we're doing for the day you every yeah. every year after thanksgiving i do this with all my cousins. right that's we a great, all get that's together a great example and it's not about the workout yeah workouts. it's not like a, we're not trying to progress or no yeah. but it's about connecting with them and you got to you know ask yourself like do what do i want to work out with this partner because i want to spend time with them and we're doing something that's pretty healthy this is where i think this is where couples get mixed up because 
usually one person in the relationship wants that and the other person wants the workout. Yeah. So it's like, you know, the wife or the husband's like, yeah, I get to hang out with my, my significant other. And the other person's like, yeah, we get to work out. Yeah. And then you kind of get that butting of head. So you have to ask yourself, am I here for the workout or is it the connection with the partner? There's no wrong answer here. There isn't, but it's important to distinguish the difference because yes. if one of the things that you're frustrated with or challenged with is you're not progressing and you're not seeing results, yep. Well, it could be because you're so focused on the connection, going to the workout and catching up with your girlfriend or your friend and talking, which there's nothing wrong with that if that's your desired outcome. But if you're also struggling with pro progressing because maybe your programming sucks because mm -hmm. you guys go there with just like I know I'm not making major gains in those workouts with my son and my wife like it, but it's not about that for right. me at that time. So I'm not allowing those to compile three weeks in a row and then going mm -hmm. like, why am I not seeing results? Why is my bench down? Or why am I not leaner? You know, it's like, I'm not even thinking about that right now. But if you are thinking about that and then you're also working out for the connections purpose, it's important that you understand the difference there because that could be a problem. Now I'll tell you what, managing gyms, I saw lots and lots of consistent, consistent meaning like three, four days a week, same time every week for years of workout partners that were there for the connection. And it was wonderful because they would show up, they'd meet each other. You could tell they'd have a good time. And then they'd always have like a scheduled lunch or something afterwards. And you could tell, I'd talk to them and you could see in the workouts, like it wasn't super hardcore, but they were still exercising, but they'd meet up and it's, oh, I get to see my friend. And afterwards we grab, co grab coffee and it's great. I think this is wonderful for the average person. Like the average person is not a, a, fitness, a fitness fanatic, right? That's just, you know, so in love with fitness that it's all about the workout. Like for me, that's what workouts are all about. But a lot of people are just, they struggle with being consistent. The workout is good because it improves the quality of life, not necessarily because they love the workout itself. So then they find that this workout partner, that's a good friend of theirs. They like to meet up three days a week at whatever time, 6 a.m. They do their workout, they get coffee together, then they go to work or whatever, or they work yeah. out, you know, they put the kids to bed and then they meet up. And I, I knew a few women like this. They would meet up and you, they were friends and they'd hang out and it kept them super consistent. And sure, the workouts weren't like all super hardcore, but they maintained good health because- They're playing the long game, right? It's a lifestyle at that's that it. point. Yeah. So, so there's totally nothing wrong with it. No, I mean, and, and there's, there's all kinds of different ways you can construct this, but I've seen the same thing uh, in the gym where it just became a thing. Like it's, it's, it's an activity that's a consistent thing that they go see their friend instead of them meeting up at a bar or, yes. you know, doing these other extracurricular things that maybe are not as healthy of an option. They've decided to meet up at the gym and then make an experience around that. So, you know, there's, there's no knocking it. Uh, and, and it's, you know, in terms of having a, a partner and a workout partner, it's just really like, sometimes you do need to dial it in. And so what, what that looks like, you know, you got to kind of assess if it's moving the needle for you or not. Yeah. I'm never working out, almost never working out for the connection with the workout partner. For me, it's always about the workout. Uh, my dad, the longest, most consistent he ever was with working out was because he worked out with his friend. His friend ended up moving and then he stopped working out. But they, for years, my, I managed a, a, a club up in Sunnyvale. My dad, and he would drive all the way up to Sunnyvale because that's where I worked. So he got to see me. So my dad would drive all the way up with his friend. They'd come in and I'd watch them work out and they did some exercises and they did some stuff. But you could tell it was because they were hanging out with each other. They were childhood friends. And then they'd go afterwards and grab some food at the restaurant, you know, uh, next door or whatever. And it was great because it kept them super consistent. For me, never, because I'm here for the workout. If I want to hang out with someone to connect, it's not going to be in the gym. I'm going to go out with you somewhere else. <laughs> go for a walk. Yeah, we'll do something else. But <laughs> yeah. you have to be honest with yourself, in other words, because what you don't want to do is find a workout partner that's there to hang out with you while you're there to work out. Now you're not. Now you're gonna have a crappy. Well, yeah, situation. Or more you're, you're, the, yoked. you're there to make change, right? Right. That's what I think. That's the important thing to note is that I think there's nothing wrong with it if you're completely content and happy, and this just helps you stay consistent with quote unquote working out. But if you're trying to make progress or change, and that you're you're lagging or you're not seeing the change you want, well, you have to evaluate. It'll this. feel frustrating if you're there and you're real serious, and your friend just wants to hang out. Very very frustrating, right? Um, the next one, here's another one, is do you have similar goals or different goals? By the way, there is no right answer here. Some people would say you have to have the same goals. No, not necessarily. Sometimes it's good to work out with someone whose goals complement yours. Like if I worked out, for example, with, you know, Justin, it would be very complimentary in some ways because he does stuff that I don't do and I do stuff that he doesn't do. 
And if we worked out together and let's just say everything else matched, then it would work out really well. Um, on the flip side, maybe you, you don't have no desire to try different things. You have no desire to work on weaknesses or imbalances or whatever. You're there to do your workout and you want to work out with someone who's also there to do the same thing as you. In which case, that's the person that you want to pick. But you have to figure this out for yourself. Before yeah, you this one's uh, challenging because I can see pros and cons to both. Totally. Right? I can see yeah. pros and cons to similar goals. I can see pros and cons to uh, different goals. Uh, the obvious, right, with similar goals, you, uh, you're training the same type of probably frequency and muscle group split or body mm -hmm. part, like whatever you're doing, like probably can uh, align pretty well. Problem with similar goals is when you have similar goals and it's easier to get in that competitive mindset when you're lifting. Yes. And maybe, uh, you know, Sal and I are workout partners. We are on this body sculpting goal. We're following maps aesthetic. So we're doing the exact same thing. Uh, I got terrible sleep last night um, and he got phenomenal sleep last night and feels completely rejuvenated and ready to smash the weights yeah. real easily. We have the same goals. We're following the same program. Uh, real easily for me to fall in the trap of like, I'm just going to stick with what you're doing today totally. because of that, uh, because we have everything so similar. But me knowing better, like, okay, this is a day when I should scale back a little bit on the intensity because I got terrible sleep last night. I'm not well fed, whatever the case may be. So yeah, I can see the pros and cons to both. And I think it's important to know the difference. Totally. Now let's talk about when, uh, when, when you know, or how to know when it's time to break up with the workout part. <laughs> you know, what's funny about this. Just, I've gotten DMS on this. You, just, you uh, sit up to the, to the wrong well, address. I, or... <laughs> I, I laugh at this one too, because like I somewhat was uh, behind the influence of like uh, my wife actually breaking up with her uh, workout partner. See? Oh, I remember when you went through this yeah and it was awkward and it actually i mean there was a lot more there like in terms of their friendship uh that uh sort of it exposed and so it just sort of they just naturally kind of broke off but yeah it was really hard for her to do that you know because there, there was a lot of time vested and they both were consistent together but it just was not doing anything well for her body it's stressful i've gotten messages from people how do i tell my workout partner not to work out with them i've told i've had people tell me that they change gyms because they didn't work out with a workout partner, <laughs> but they wanted to work out at the same time. Yeah. So they didn't want to show up, see their workout partner, and then, huh, I'll Awkward. be over here, he'll be over there. <laughs> yeah, cheat, so. cheat on them. That's the easiest path. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I've also had people <laughs> say that. Show up with a different workout yeah, partner. Yeah. <laughs> You've been getting a pump without me? <laughs> yeah, dude. Totally. Oh, but here, here's some signs that you want to look out for that'll tell you eh, it's probably time <clears throat> to break up with your workout partner. Um, number one, um, your workouts are unproductive. No. You know, I, I, this is, this is why all the workout partners I've worked out with, even the ones that were good eventually ended. And I'm very blunt, by the way, I'll tell a workout partner and I've done this. I've said this to people and I've said, Hey, you're weak. I'm this, this is not working. For, <laughs> I'll, just, I'll tell them it's not working for me anymore. I want to work out on my own. Yeah. Um, and it's because eventually what happened is I, the workout started to deteriorate and it, and just started to become, not as productive. And for me, it's a very serious thing. And when that starts to happen, I'm like, out of here. So if you're doing your workouts and you're finding they're just not productive, you're just showing up and it's like, why am I even doing this? Like that's, that's time. Yeah. To sometimes your goals don't align. And you know, sometimes you start noticing like nagging pains and, and achiness. That's another one. Yeah. That, um, I think you start kind of evaluating these things and you start seeing the patterns of what you keep doing and what that's leading towards. And so I think that was where it was obvious, uh, you know, just speaking on behalf of my wife, like it's like, this is not benefiting my body. Like it should be. Yeah. The next one is you, you, you just start. you said nagging pains and stuff is you start getting injured a lot. I had yeah. a workout partner break up with me over this. Oh, it was, wow. it was the same person I told you about earlier with the shitty form. He eventually, and it was like, when he hey, said this to me, I'm a like, guy with shitty form <laughs> broke up with you. Yeah, I know. You're like, Man, I tried to warn you. That had to be oh, a tough oh, one for you that oh, day. Oh, the irony tough was, tough one. The irony was You're hilarious. breaking up with me? Yeah. <laughs> you and your shitty form? Yeah. <laughs> I'll break up with you first. <laughs> yeah, I can just no. see Sal Gidella, man. No, actually, I was like. <laughs> you don't break up with me. Yeah. I break up with you. Yeah. yeah. The, the, irony, how this works. the irony of it was so <laughs> hilarious because I remember he, he, he comes in. He's like, hey, this will be our last workout. He goes, you know, I just keep hurting myself and stuff. And I remember like, look at him like with shock, like, yeah, bro. How many times do I got to tell you yeah. you're using too much weight and you have shitty form. But he's <laughs> like, yeah, I keep getting hurt. So, 
I got to change my workouts and my workout. I remember being like so happy, like, cool. You, you said it before I you did. You made it easy. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. But I mean, if you find yourself getting hurt quite a bit um, because you're, you're following a workout or you're working out with a workout partner that's just not smart or pushing you when you shouldn't, like, have you ever done this? I hate this. This annoys the <clears throat> shit out of me. You're doing a set and you've got, you're working out with a workout partner. And you want to stop the set because, you know, this is about as hard as I want to go. Yeah. No, man, you got two more. Come on, you yeah, got two yeah. more. Shut your mouth, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I'm not doing two more. I'm done with my set. You the, know? the workouts I'm productive and the getting injured, uh, both, I think, um, happen a lot to people that um, measure, like, uh, their workouts by how much they enjoy them or like them. So I think of, like, uh, people that love class settings with their yeah. friends. That like to like they love it. They go there. It's fun. They sweat. They feel like they got a hard workout, but it's the same shit every single every single time they come in over and over and over. There and the results stall and or chronic pain sinks in. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's hard to get them to see past the. But I love it. I meet my girlfriend there every week or every day, and we go there and we have such a great workout. And then we go have you know lunch afterwards, and they're so attached to the connection part and the consistency and the fun part. But then at the same time, then they're expressing, I'm so frustrated though, because I've this last 15 pounds, I can't seem to lose it. And my knees are bothering me and my hips are bothering me. And it's just like, yeah, it's because you've attached so much value to the connection fun part of the workout. Yet you're saying that you want these mm -hmm. results. And part of the problem is you're doing the same repetitive shit over. Yeah. Yeah. The last two sort of the ones that's like the inconsistency the showing up late part oh. like all that kind of, that's what actually led to some of the breakups i had uh with with gym partners because it's like i'm here i'm I'm like i don't want to sit here and like uh you know wait for you when i could be productive and do my own thing like where are you like it's just like i don't, I don't need to be your generation of motivation you know like i don't need to be that guy for you yeah no be, be, being late or not showing up you get this is the, I've always been like this with workout partners. You get one one shot. I don't not not like one strike, like one time you you don't show up or one time you're late and I'm not working out with you. And I, I I was notorious for this. I would have a workout partner show up ten minutes late. I'm already on the second exercise. Oh, you didn't wait for me? Nah, man, go do your workout. I'm in this. I'm in this right now. So that's just me. So and if you're a consistent person and you're very serious about your workouts, having a workout partner that shows up late or is inconsistent or no shows you that's that's not good you 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 gotta you gotta cut that off i think that's a big deal and everybody's different in their tolerance for me it was zero you get zero opportunities the second you're late or the second you don't show up like uh we're not gonna work yeah out i'm trying to late. remember if i had anybody like that i don't know if i had somebody that was showing up late and if i did i'm sure i don't remember you probably sure. just started yeah that's exactly yeah. what i would that's yeah. totally what i would do uh -huh. i'm not the type of guy who would sit around and be like oh I'll give him five more minutes yeah, I'm be going. Like, yeah. oh, we said we started 12 <laughs> i'm starting at 12 you know what i'm yeah. saying say like, he can find me so yeah, I don't remember that one. I do remember the last point that you have is the the drama one. And that was what I said oh, earlier. Yeah. And and I didn't I really didn't make this I just assumed this was just part of it. Like you have rest breaks, you have conversation, whatever's on your guys' mind, you talk about. And a lot of people like to talk about drama and other people and shit. And it's just like that was pretty that ruins a workout for me. It it, <clears throat> it does now today, like because I see it and I really uh I I and I I think I treat my workouts different, but I probably allowed that to creep in a lot more, which didn't I didn't realize that the compounding effects of that of just being distracted like that, the negativity to forget just the workout and the results, just the the positive mindset and the framework of your day and the way you go about things taking in a bunch of negative energy like that. I just, I believe that's a terrible way to kick off a day or finish a workout. Yeah. And this is, again, this is an individual thing. Cause I can remember there were two, there's two of these two women. I remember specifically when we talked earlier about connection, there's these two women that used to work out and it was every morning and they would drop their kids off at school. Then they'd come work out. Then they'd get breakfast together. And it was like a four or five day a week thing, I think. Um, and I would say hi to them. Hey, what's up ladies. And they do their thing. And for them, because it was a connection thing, they would spend five minutes in between sets talking about their lives. And it wasn't drama to them. They loved it because they were there to connect. So this you have to kind of determine for yourself. For me, any conversation, <laughs> you know, longer than 15 seconds in between sets is too much drama. Like, I don't care. <laughs> <Too much drama. laughs> I don't want to hear about anything right now. I just want to just, just be in my zone, right? So you have to kind of determine this for yourself with your workouts is, you know, is this drama? Like, Am I getting stressed out or angry or upset or off focus? 
And that's different from person to person. For you, drama may be that you're there to connect with someone and they're just quiet. And you might be like, hey, I want to work out with someone that's more talkative and fun. This person's boring. Like someone who's there to connect would find me very boring. They would not like to work out with me because I'm not going to talk. Too well, much. you know what's interesting about well, this? Need to do the workout. <laughs> <laughs> it, it reminds me of like the different types of clients you would get as a coach, right? And like yes. what they're looking for uh, from the workout, and like you try to kind of be a chameleon in terms of like I need to ramp up my energy for this person because they obviously need a push and they need like you know so, some added uh, bit of energy in this. And then some of them you got to like really like kind of calm it down, calm down, and you know get them to to really like focus on the rest periods and um, you know, so it's interesting to kind of, all of these apply basically, even when you're going to look for a coach. Oh, hundred percent. So true. All right. So here's some reasons why it may be good to not have a workout partner. Why it might be a good idea to work out uh, on your own. One is uh, you get to follow your own workout and your own schedule. Um, it's, it's as individualized as it gets when you're by yourself, right? You, you don't have to consider anyone else. You don't have to consider anybody's feelings or form or technique. You don't have to adjust the seat on the exercise machine. You don't have to add the weight or take weight off. <clears throat> You're not spotting anybody. You are 100% individualized workout. Uh, for me, this is why I've worked out 90% of the time on my own. I think this is a, a pretty good value. Now, some people, this is well worth the trade to work out with their favorite person. And I totally get that. Um, but for other people, this is, can be a huge plus. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm going to take it even further. And I, I, I believe this is the ultimate place to reach. Um, I know you just defended somebody who would willing to trade those things off because they really, really, and I'm not by no means judging somebody who likes to work out with their workout partner and that works for them. But I really believe the ultimate place to get is to apply. Like we talk about intuitive eating and intuitive training, how that's like kind of the pinnacle yeah. of eating. That's the pinnacle of training to where you just know what, when you go to that gym, you know what's best for your body at that time and you do a really good job of addressing it. Um, I just don't think that's possible um, with another person. I think you can get really good at it and you can have the partner, you fist bump and you do your headphones and this and that. But I think you'll never reach the same level as you would learning to do this on your own and learning your body and not having any distractions of any workout partner. So that's just my opinion. That I think that that I, I agree with that. The only problem with that, but I do agree, but I think the only problem with that is that we have to be careful because I mean, look, we've all worked in this space for a long time. We can't, we know this. Not everybody's going to be a fitness fanatic. Most people are not. Most people do so it. That, and, that, and that's fine because yeah. then that, and you maybe your entire life, you do rely on having a partner. And I'm not judging that person that right. does that. I, what I'm saying is that I think the pinnacle. And that may, that person, there's a lot of people that will work out and never reach the pinnacle yeah, of, and they have of, no desire. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, and they, and they don't have a desire to, and there's, and I'm not judging that person and there's nothing wrong with that, but I truly believe if you're somebody who is seeking like the, the ultimate like level of being able to train and yeah. diets so with that, it is being able to do this intuitively on your own without anybody external motivation or discipline to get you there, just you and yourself, the ability to listen to your body, to know what's best for you, to be able to complete sets when you need to, to pull back when you know you need to pull back, like to this push. Is what, yeah, and I think that's what happens when somebody does it long enough and then they reach the level of, of, of I really have a passion for fitness. That's usually where they end up, right? But a lot of people, um, what I don't want to do is discourage people because they're like, oh, well, I don't care about that. No, like, no, there's that. different phases, man. And yeah. if you're at that phase of more power to you and, and utilize that, it's a tool. Yep. Right. Yeah. And, I just but, want people to be consistent, you know, Yeah, and, a, a, workout partner, you. a workout partner can absolutely be a tool and be tremendously helpful for you. I just, uh, my point is that I, I think if you're continuing, you wanting to progress beyond that, the, yeah. the ultimate place to reach is to be able to intuitively do it by yourself. Yeah. Another reason is this, you don't have to wait for anybody or depend on anybody. But this also could be a, a positive uh, for working out with a training partner because maybe the fact that somebody depends on you is what keeps you more consistent. Maybe you like that. Maybe you like the fact that there's you have somebody that's doing this with you. For me, I don't like that because again, I'm a fitness fanatic, uh, like all three of us are. I I don't want I don't want it to be wait for anybody. I don't want to sit and oh we're going to meet at this time. Here's what's going to happen. It's just me. It's just me. 
I'm going to do my thing. But again, it's for some people, it's the opposite and it's actually a detriment. And for them, it's, it makes them more consistent knowing, oh, John's, you know, he needs me. He needs me today to, to show up, to yeah, work yeah. out. And this is what we're going to do together. Um, here's another one. And this for me is a big deal. And we mentioned earlier, if you want a meditative workout, you can't do that with someone else. Mm. I, it's, I can't be in like, again, and we're all like this. The, we've all worked out at the same time, uh, probably 50 times. We've only worked out together, together, like less than five times. When we work out at the same time, we're all meditative in our own space. No and we're in different no corners of yeah, the gym. Different corners of the yeah. gym. No one's talking to each other. You may as well. We don't say a single word <laughs> yeah, to each other, right? Yeah, if, yeah. if anything, it's like, I may talk shit to you for two seconds across the gym. <laughs> yeah. And that's, I have to catch you with your headphones off and mine are off. And that almost never happens. Well, yeah. does that count? I mean, yeah. if you get to that level where you know yourself so well and you're working out with like one of your friends, but you guys split off, but you just like make it a scheduled uh, you know, appointment where you both come in, sure, you guess. know, and it's so I, I mean, I think there's a way that you could probably evolve into that, but you really do need to put in a lot of work on, on yourself and knowing your body signals and knowing like how you feel for that day. I, I actually think that's, a, I thought that was the kind of final progression before it ended up being just myself was I did that for quite some time. You just where, showed up together. Yeah. And did your own thing. I actually did yeah. that when I was competing, I had other competitors that were competing and competing in shows that I was in and stuff like that. Cause and I so, like being around other people and yeah, doing for sure. And, and it was like an accountability piece. Hey, what time you in the gym tomorrow like i'll be there at noon cool i'll be there at noon also would you guys meet up and eat or something afterwards yeah we eat afterwards but we would not train together yeah, or maybe we'd meet and we'd be walking on the treadmill afterwards that's right? not bad like so, meet, having an appointment after the workout together right, right. that might be a good account right so i did i did i did like utilizing that as like an accountability piece to to go there and a motivational piece i know somebody else who's pushing for a same show as i'm going to is there but i had already breached a place in my life or in training where i knew that like i knew what's best for my body he doesn't know that we're, mm -hmm. we're to have different bodies we shouldn't be working out together especially at this level what we're doing so we would just meet there for accountability train walk treadmills afterwards and then we go eat at this place that was yeah. right across the street so that that i see i think I, I mean, and i really think that that's like you're right there you're pretty much training by yourself you're not really yeah. you know you're meeting someone at the gym but you guys aren't yeah. getting distracted you're not spotting each other you ain't doing all that shit yeah now again that being said i've known quite a few people not not a majority the majority of the people that i know that have worked out very consistently end up working out alone but a good there's a there's a, a sizable minority let's say 15 percent of the people 20 percent that i know who work out consistently who've worked out with a workout partner consistently for long periods of time but it's really hard to find someone that matches all those things so here's here's some advice when you're when you're agreeing to work out with someone, don't do it haphazardly. In other words, don't be like, yeah, let's meet up Mondays and Wednesdays and work out together. And because then you'll end up in the situation where it's like, okay, now I got to break up with this person and it could be awkward. What do you say to them? What if they still show up at the same time? Do you guys just like do your own thing? Like it's really weird. Do I got to change gyms? So what, here's a piece of advice. Lay out your expectations before you start. Hey, you know, I was thinking about working out with a workout partner. Is this something you'd be up for? Yeah. Well, here's the times. Here's what I'm looking for. And here's what I'll do. And I'll stop. If these things aren't meant, don't take it personal. This is just how I work out. This is how I've, the last few training partners, how I started those workouts. I say, hey, you want to work out together? Yes. Here's the deal. If you show up late once, I'm getting started. And I probably won't work out with you anymore after that. I'm very quiet in my zone when I work out. I'm not following it. I sound like an asshole, but I would set the expectations so that if the, one of those things didn't happen afterwards, it wasn't this awkward like, hey, why this is the main reason, reason why we front. don't work out with Sal because he came with this long old <laughs> list <laughs> with non-negotiables that we had, that to, we had to sign. And that that I was just like, this is way too much commitment for me, bro. I just wanted to get a lift with you this morning. Fuck it. I'll work, I'll work out with myself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. That's totally not true. <laughs> Look, if you like our information, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. You can also find us all on social media. So Justin is on uh, Instagram at mindpumpjustin. Adam is on Instagram at mindpumpadam. And you can find me on Twitter at mindpumpsal. 